Hi there, and welcome to Dark Souls for Dummies, the series that shows you everything you need to know for your Dark Souls 3 journey. For this first episode, I will be showing you the best starting class in Dark Souls 3. So, go ahead and load up your game and start a new game. Then you'll be brought into a cutscene, which I'm just going to skip for right now. And it will bring you to a big confusing screen with a big man on the right side. Oh yeah. Okay, so... You're also able to select your name, gender, age, class, burial gift, face presets, build, and appearance. But for right now, I'm just going to be focusing on the class and the burial gift menus. So, the first class that is available to you is the Knight class. It has a lot of vigor, which is what um, health is called in this game. And it also has a very good set of armor. Oh, nice shiny metal armor. And it also uh, comes with a um, straight sword, which is a highly versatile weapon, which can be used in pretty much any case scenario, and can even get you through all of the game just with that weapon alone. Um, it also comes with a knight shield, which is a medium shield. Um, which is good for blocking and will absorb all damage while you're blocking. So, very good shield as well. Um, the second class is the Mercenary. And so, it starts with dual swords and also a medium-sized shield. Um, it also has a very high dexterity stat. And what dexterity is, is the more dexterity you have, the more damage your smaller weapons will do. So like your twin swords, or your daggers, or any sort of those smaller, faster weapons, dexterity will make those do more damage. And so, um, he's pretty fun. Um, you're not really going to be using his shield too much, because you're normally going to be two-handing his swords but it is there in case you want the shield. The third class is the warrior, which has the highest health and strength out of any of the characters, and the strength stat controls the damage of your heavier weapons, such as like battle axes, great axes, great swords. So all of the heavier equipment gets extra damage from strength stat, and so the warrior starts with a battle axe and a large shield and the battle axe is really good because it has really high damage output also you're able to buff it for it to do even more damage which is very nice next we have the herald which comes with a nice mix of strength and dexterity and he has a spear which is good for keeping your opponents just a little bit farther away. And he also has a medium shield and a talisman. So what a talisman is, it is, it is a item that you use to cast miracles, um, such as healing or lightning. And so one of the miracles that the Herald starts with is a heal aid spell. And so when that is used, it will restore a small amount of health, which is quite nice. And then for the next class, which is the Thief, he comes with a bandit's knife, a small shield, and also a bow. And so the knife hits really, really quickly, but it's not very high damage, so... I wouldn't really recommend this, but it also comes with a bow, so you can keep your enemies at a little bit longer ranges, um, but the bow does not do that much damage, and you only have 30 arrows for it, but you can purchase more arrows for the bow once you get to Fire Link Shrine after the first boss. Um, the next class is the Assassin class. And he starts with a um, thrusting sword and a small shield and a sorcerer's staff. And so what the sorcerer's staff allows you to do is you're, allowed, you're able to cast sorceries with it. And the sorcery that comes with the assassin is one called Spook, 
which one cast makes it so the character's movement is silent. Also, it makes it so any non-lethal fall damage um, won't deal the damage. Um, the next class is the Sorcerer class, um, which comes with a Mail Breaker and a Sorcerer's Staff, as well as a small shield. Um, the Mail Breaker itself is not a very good weapon, um, but it does have the highest intelligence out of all of the starting classes, and what intelligence is, is intelligent the more intelligence you have the more damage your sorceries do so this is very nice if you want to try and keep your distance and just hit your enemies with projectiles and so he has the sorceries um soul arrow and great soul arrow for his starting sorceries which are very nice and then he also comes with the young dragon crest ring which um boosts the strength of your sorceries while it's equipped and so that is very nice as well um the next one is the pyromancer who has a nice mix of intelligence and faith because pyromancy scales with both intelligence and faith um he also comes with a hand axe a round shield and then a pyromancy flame to cast pyromancies with um he also has the Pyromancy Fireball, which throws a fireball for short to medium distances, which is nice. And then it also comes with the Great Swamp Ring, which makes your Pyromancies do more damage. So, pretty good at keeping your enemies just a little bit farther away, but it will not keep them as far away as, as say, like the Sorcerer. Next up is the Cleric, which has a Mace and a sacred chime as well as a medium shield um so the mace is really good at dealing a lot of damage really quickly um so overall the mace is a pretty good weapon also the sacred chime is basically the a talisman which allows you to cast miracles and the miracles you get with the cleric are the um, normal heal spell, which is like heal aid, but it does more healing. And then also a spell called force, which pushes your enemies back, but it does not do damage. Um, the cleric also has the highest faith stat out of any of the starting classes. And so all miracles, their strength depends on your faith. So... The more faith you have, the more healing or damage your miracles will do. Um, the last one is the Deprived. Um, he's completely naked except for a loincloth. He also comes with a club and a plank shield. Um, really not the best guy to go with. He doesn't have too much. The club is a nice weapon. But the lack of armor really does make him hard to use. So I would not really recommend the Deprived. Okay. So overall, the classes I would recommend would first be the Knight. who uh, Because he has the really good armor, really good health, and also the really good weapon. So I'd definitely recommend him. The second one I'd recommend would be the Warrior because of its high damage output with the battle axe and also the battle axe's ability to buff for even more damage and then the third class i would recommend if you wanted to do something a little bit more long range would be the sorcerer because it has two different sorceries to um use at different times and it is very helpful and versatile um so those would be the classes I recommend. So now that you have a class picked out, now to pick a burial gift. So you have a couple of options for burial gifts. And so what a burial gift is, is it will be what comes into the game when you first spawn in. So you'll have your, your normal class stuff, and then you'll have a burial gift. 
So the first option you have is not bring a ba bringing a burial gift with you. But why do that? Why punish yourself? You, come on, you earned it. You deserve a burial gift. So don't don't pick none. Take something with you. So your first real option is the life ring. What the life ring does is it raises your health while it's being worn. And so that's very helpful for the beginning of the game to just give you that little extra bit of health to get you through a tough boss fight or through a horde of enemies. So overall a very helpful burial gift. Next is the Divine Blessing, which um, is a one-time use item that fully restores your health and cures ailments. So as far as ailments, it's all the status that can be put onto your character during the game, such as like poison, toxic, frostbite, bleeding, HIV, all that good stuff. Next is a hidden blessing, which fully restores your FP, which is the FP is what you use to cast sorceries, pyromancies, miracles, and you also use that for your weapon skills. But this item is one-time use as well, so I would not really select this one because you only get to use it once. The next option is a black fire bomb, which is an item that when thrown will hit the target at short to medium range and will inflict fire damage. Um, these are also one-time use items, but it comes with five of these, so you get a little bit more, but still not great. Next you have the Fire Gem, which is an item you can give to the blacksmith once you beat the first boss to make it so your weapon does normal physical damage and also does fire damage, which is very helpful for certain enemies and also just getting a little bit extra damage on your sword. So, that is definitely good. Next is the Sovereignless Soul, which, when used, gives you a couple extra souls, and souls are the currency of the game. So, when you'll be able to buy weapons, armors, spells, and also level up your character, character using souls. So, this one's very nice as well for just giving you a little extra edge um, in the beginning of the game with a couple extra upgrades to your characters or just a couple more items. Next is the Rusted Gold Coin, which is a one-time use item that, when used, raises your chance to discover rare items or weapons from killing enemies, but the effect only lasts about 20 seconds, and you only get to use it once, so I would not really recommend the Rusted Gold Coin. Next is the Cracked Red Eye Orb. Um, so this is a item you use for PvP, and so when you use this, you'll go into somebody else's world, and your goal is to try and kill them. And when you kill them, you'll be awarded with a couple of souls, um, a couple of souls and an item. But you're able to get um, unlimited of these once you beat the second boss in the game, so I wouldn't recommend doing the Cracked Red Eye Orb. Next is the Young White Branch, which is a one-time use item, which can be, which is used for blending in with your environment. So it'll make you into like a pot or a statue or just stuff like that to kind of hide from human opponents. And I wouldn't really recommend this one because you're only able to use it once and also the, um, Camouflage goes away if you run or you roll, so I wouldn't really recommend this one. So with all this in mind, the burial gifts I would recommend would be the life ring to just give you that little extra bit um, to get you through tough bosses and enemies, the fire gem to give you that little extra bit of damage once you beat the first boss, and then also the Sovereignless Soul, so you can upgrade your character or buy more items um, once you reach Firelink Shrine as well. All of those are very helpful. And so those are the class and burial gift I would 
recommend for the beginning of Dark Souls 3. Um, I hope this guide helped you enter into the world of Dark Souls 3 with just a little bit more understanding. Um, for a tutorial on the basic controls, the health, the focus points, and the stamina system, uh, please check out our next video in the Dark Souls for Dummy series. Um, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to continue getting back to the basics.